Right guys, check out what we got in the shop today. 1937 Plymouth Business Coupe. A friend of mine gave me a call. Sadly, an old boy passed away and he had four cars to sell. Really didn't have enough space for another one. He sent me the pics and the rest is history. So, right guys, so let's rewind and see how it all unfolded. <laughs> So this is Kevin. What have we bought, Kevin? You bought a Plymouth. It is gonna, gonna be stunning. 1937 Plymouth. Yeah. The body's been dropped over the chassis. It was a salesman's car. It uh, belonged to my mate. Sadly, he's uh, passed away. It's a project he never finished. He dropped all the body down over the chassis, put big block in it. Big block Chevy. Uh, it needs a lot of work. Big block, coupe. And no rust. Daisies, side pipes. So you could say this is a barn find. For any man watching, yeah. it's the back end. It's got of, some hips on it. It's, it's the got some back bottom. end that's always important. <laughs> This is definitely one of my bucket list cars. As I said, it's a 37 Plymouth Business Coupe. Always wanted one. Big bucks if they're restored and hot rodded. We found this one, deceased estate, and it was pretty much out of our budget, but it came with a big block Chevy, turbo 500 transmission, um, and it's been channeled four inches over the chassis. So Jim and I went and had a look, got a pretty killer deal on it. They were trying to clear the estate and obviously so get the house ready for sale. So we made them an offer back and forth like you do, and we ended up taking it home, which is fantastic. So what we did, what we kind of figured is, he'd shoehorned a big block Chevy into it, and you would think that would fit quite nicely, seeing as it's such a big car. In all fairness, it doesn't fit that well. So if you want to come and have a quick look up here, to get this thing in, obviously it's loosely assembled, actually, you can see right down here, he's cut the chassis rails out to clear the headers. So obviously the front end's got to come out of the car and quite sadly a lot of that work has to be done again which is completely okay because we'll put our own twist on it. Jim loves the car as well which is fantastic. He wants to paint it baby blue so I kind of think this thing really should be put on the back burner until we finish the other cars but knowing what we're both like we've kind of already started so if you have a look over here we pulled this big block Chevy out of it. It's a Mark IV uh, 454, um, it's got an 850 carb on it, electronic ignition, but it, the internals of this motor is absolutely mint. Pull the covers off, pull the sump off, it's, it's been overhauled, it's been rebuilt. So we stuck it on the old marketplace on the same night actually we bought the car back and I flipped both the transmission, which is a turbo 400, and sold the motor and it's paid for a lot of the car. So we're not in the car for a lot of money now, which is fantastic. So don't know what we're going to put in it just yet, but we're going to repair all the chassis rails, go through the car. The channeling needs a bit of fettling, needs a bit of finishing, but because we've got so much going on, Jim's got a mate up the road that does a lot of panel work. So he's gonna hang the front end for us. It was already hung, but it wasn't very nice. So he's gonna build us a tubular front end for it and hang, the, hang all the panels for us. Then it'll come back and Jim and I'll do our thing. So stay tuned, this one's gonna be a killer. So obviously these used to mount to the side here so that the lights were a lot closer. So the previous guy, he's mounted them lower which we think looks killer. Cosmetically, I think that's where they need to sit. But yeah, they had a really tall grill on them. And uh, what he's done here is he stitched the bonnet up. So this would have been side opening. Um, I managed to find the inset piece, the 
um, the hinge, which is fantastic. So we're going to make a new bonnet and have a set of hinge in there again, so it's side opening. And we found the original panels. He'd made new ones up here, but he still had the old ones, which was great. So yeah, we'll put our own modern twist on it. But like I said, baby blue. It's got a set of daisies on it, original daisy uh, mags, which is fantastic. Always wanted a set. You know, they're, they're a thousand pounds for a set of wheels if you can find those things. And this has got a killer set of, you know, daisies on it. So um, yeah, looking forward to the build. Not sure which direction it's going to go in. So uh, if anyone's got any ideas on engine transplants, hit me up. Let me know what you'd like to see in it. I kind of want to do something different. I don't know what. Done loads of small blocks, big blocks, like everybody does. But I'm not saying I'm going to put a diesel or anything in it. But I'd like to put something a little bit different. But um, still with a bucket load of power. So got any ideas? Hit us up. Right guys, so as you can see, we got the car back from paint. Absolutely love how this thing turned out. Like we said, it was never meant to be a concourse, you know, top 60 car or anything like that. We just, we went from saying, well, we'll just blow the rear quarters in once we kind of flared the arches and did the tub and tin work to, you know, Jim's like, screw it. Let's just paint the whole fucking car. It could do with a tidy up. So, you know, for the time we spent, even Jim's like, I can't believe how straight it is, you know. It's just, it's turned out amazing. It's beat all our, you know, expectations. So we started to fit some of the chrome trims and everything up again. Had a really busy couple of weeks here. Sold the tractor, which is going out Wednesday. So we've got a few things to do to that to get that ready. Um, got a guy interested in the Nova. Obviously we bought the Plymouth. I kind of need to sit down now and work out where this thing's at and what the next step is. We're waiting for our time slot with Wayne at um, Intergalactic. Uh, for the cage so that hopefully should be next week maybe the week after but I have to order now coilovers in the rear end we're in talks with the guys in the states they've sent me through everything they need now that we've kind of got the car back and it's sitting right gotta sit down and take all those measurements today because they've changed again and need to get on the internet and start ordering wheelie bars and parachutes and fuel fittings fuel lines brakes I mean the list goes on you know you just have to kind of try and put some sort of you know order into how we're going to do these things so yeah the next steps are going to be a little bit um a little bit tedious i think maybe a little bit of hanging around while we get roll cages and wheelie bars and shoots and stuff done we've managed to wire the car though which is great bob and i have pretty much finished putting all that together and then the engine builder is back next month so that's when we're gonna finally finish screwing this thing together and hitting the dyno so can't wait it's gonna be a it's gonna be killer Long time coming, pulling my hair out half the time about this thing as to what to do and how to do it and how much money to spend, but um, it's turned out good. A lot more expensive than what I initially thought, but I suppose that's the name of uh, modified cars, isn't it? So yeah, absolutely love it. Killer, can't wait to get this thing on the road. Still really, really hoping to, 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 uh, to get to Drag Week. I still think it's possible. Tickets haven't gone on sale yet. Dates haven't been announced. But we're, we're, you know, we're monitoring it every day. So as soon as those tickets go on sale, we're going to buy it no matter what. But we should get there. Still got gears to put in the back of the car, which is not a biggie. I'm going to do that this week. I'm going to start plumbing up the fuel system this week and get the coilovers and everything sorted. They reckon they can ship them in two days. So we should see those next week so we can get those installed. Still trying to finalise the brake setup. I don't quite know where we are with that yet i kind of think it's all upgraded anyway so i'm kind of hoping it's all right as it is if it's not we're gonna to have to step it up a little bit but that'll be the last thing on the list i would think but yeah all in all coming along pretty quickly most of the hard sort of grunt work's done got some new mickey t et uh street radials for it the other day cost me an arm and a leg so on the street we're going to run 295 60 15. in hindsight i kind of figure i shouldn't have even bought those slicks i should have just run them on radials because guys now are telling me they're doing six seven second passes on the, on a on a on a street radio which is just phenomenal obviously we're not going to go that fast but it is what it is they reckon these things have got more hook more bite so that's what i was advised to buy so right guys so if you want to follow all these shit hot builds or shit builds whatever you want to call them please like share subscribe it would mean the world to us just like everyone else out there just trying to make this dream a reality you know, um, working day and night, big hours, just trying to get these things done. So yeah, please share it about, tell your mates, get this party started.